As we've seen earlier in the program, treating acid mine drainage in West Virginia is an ongoing and expensive problem, but a new process developed by researchers at WVU may have found a way to turn that liability into an asset. The DEP's Brianna Hickman joins us now with the details. Jake, as we've shown you, the process of treating acid mine drainage leaves behind a sludge of metals, iron, aluminum, and manganese mostly, a waste product that had no value until now. In a lab on the campus of West Virginia University, 100 tiny machines quietly spin a liquid mixture. They're separating a specific group of minerals, rare earth elements they're called, from a solution derived from acid mine drainage sludge. Despite their name, rare earths like scandium, yttrium, and the lanthanides, elements 57 to 71 on the periodic table, are widely distributed in the rocks of the earth just rarely concentrated enough to get a commercially viable deposit. Right now, most of the world's supply is controlled by China, but that could change. I'm really optimistic about this. Uh, and no one ever accuses me of being a reflexive optimist. <laughs> but this, I think, is one of the more exciting projects I, I've worked on in, in, in my career here. Dr. Paul Zimkevich is director of the Water Research Institute at WVU. His team developed the process and is currently working to determine how to expand it to an industrial scale. The project is funded by the Department of Energy, which was looking for new ways to extract and refine the valuable materials. It's just uh, almost a matter of serendipity, but when USDOE first came out with original uh, solicitation for looking at coal-based um, rare earth streams, uh, they really didn't have acid mine drainage in mind. Uh, they were thinking more like coal ash and coal refuse, partings, that sort of thing. Uh, but I just so happened to have a, a, an old data set from 1999 from a friend of mine in USGS. I decided to check out that uh, old data set and found that there were, there were lots of rare earths coming in to the AMD treatment plants and none going out. <laughs> and that can only mean one thing, all of those rare earths were winding up into sludge along with all the other metals. And it takes them out in a form that's really, like I say, easy to recover. All you have to do is acidify. You don't have to grind the stuff up. It's already in very finely divided form. Uh, you don't have to break it out of a mineral matrix, which is a, a, a big cost if you're mining this stuff. And the other thing that's really attractive about this uh, source is that the mixture of heavy and critical rare earth elements versus the light ones, which are less valuable, is really favorable. So if you add up the critical and, and heavy rare earth elements against the total rare earth elements in AMD sludge, it's something like 60%. Um, the last operating rare earth mine in the United States uh, in Mountain Pass, California, uh, had only something like 12% uh, heavy rare earths in it. The rest of it were lights. The DEP is providing the team with its feedstock, sludge from the nearby Omega Mine treatment plant. And it just so happens that that particular sludge, uh, from like 17% of the rare earths in that sludge are uh, an element called scandium. Scandium is the, by far the most valuable of all the rare earth elements. And it's some, worth something, it's an oxide, it's worth $4,500 per kilogram. Per kilogram, that's, that's a lot of money. <laughs> it's, it's the richest source of scandium we've come across so far. And DEP is, is, is treating this water, and they're separating out the sludge by running the, um, the, the, the effluent from their treatment plant into these things called geotubes, which are these big long sacks that naturally dewater, leaving these sacks full of sludge behind. Each one of those sacks is worth something like $20,000 in, in rare earth value alone, and they've got something like 18 or 20 of them out there at the Omega site right now. So it gives you some idea. Uh, the, the kind of potential value that could be realized if this does turn into an industry. Treating acid mine drainage is expensive. Besides the cost of building the treatment facility, the operations and maintenance costs to run a facility like Omega run into the tens of thousands of dollars annually. Sludge management is a huge expense for when you're treating acid mine drainage. So if we can find a beneficial use of this byproduct of uh, the, the treatment process, it would be a, a tremendous savings to the state. I've spent most of my career working on acid mine drainage problems in, in West Virginia, and we're still working on mines that were in production in 1911. Um, it's, all, it's all over the Appalachian uh, coal basin. 
finding a way to incentivize treatment of that water, which is a major pollutant. I mean, it wipes out more stream miles than any other pollutant we have in the Appalachians. So just finding a way to incentivize that, to get people thinking about that as a resource rather than uh, just a, a pollutant and a liability that has to be dealt with, does a couple things. One, it helps clean up streams because it brings money into that sector because you can't, you can't extract the rare earths without actually cleaning up the acid drainage. <laughs> so that it, it's, it's a benefit in that regard. Secondly, in these coal communities where the acid mine drainage comes out of the old mine portals or refuse piles or whatever, uh, you have infrastructure, you have a road network, you have transportation, you have a workforce, you have a lot of things already there that allow you to move into commercial operations relatively quickly. Right now, researchers are fine-tuning the process to optimize the rare earth extraction. The end result will be a highly enriched rare earth oxide that can be further refined into rare earth metals. Uh, what we ne really need to find out is how much it costs to process a ton of material through this kind of technology. And once we get those operating conditions under control and we understand what they are, then we can start designing the next stage, which is a field scale pilot or demonstration plant or maybe even a commercial scale unit. Dr. Zinkevich says they've done a survey of mines and AMD treatment sites in the northern and central Appalachian coal basins and have determined they produce about 800 tons of rare earth elements with a value somewhere north of $190 million a year. So if this can be expanded to an industrial scale, this has a huge potential impact on the region's economy. For Environment Matters, I'm Brianna Hickman. Thank you, Brianna. This second phase of the process is expected to be completed by this time next year. We'll keep you posted on the team's progress.